good morning. Well, actually, almost afternoon. Um, excuse the road noise. We do live next to a main road, but I thought I would do a garden tour for you today. So this is my first garden tour. Um, we moved here four months ago and the garden was so unloved. So yeah, I've just been pottering about and I thought I would share it with you today. So let's go. It's currently the 15th of October and there's another car coming. This is gonna be fun. Right, so starting from the top, this is what will be called our formal garden. Um, this border here was, you didn't even know it was a wall to be fair. There was, you, you couldn't see it. So I've planted, was it 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, 15 uh, red robin bushes, hoping that it'll go about 2 to 3 metres high. Uh, just to give us <laughs> a wee bit of sound buffering <laughs> and obviously interest because the red robin is incredible when the new growth is out. Uh, as you can see, it's like super glossy, green, red new growth. Amazing. So, that spans all the way down there, all the way down. And then moving along, um, we have a lovely tree here. Couldn't tell you the name of it, but um, you can't really appreciate it just now actually because it's all turned over, but um, it's like yellow, white and green. Uh, yeah, so it's beautiful. A little bit unloved, needing a bit of a prune, but I'm sure that'll come in time. Um, and I've got a couple of bird feeders on it there. So this is the top of our gardens. So this is the top level. We have about four levels all together. Um, I put in this pathway a couple of weeks ago. Uh, excuse the, the pile, I've just been planting crocuses. <laughs> um, so I thought it would be nice to have kind of a walkway to lead you down to the first set of steps. Down there. Thank you, Rannick, for demonstrating. <laughs> um, this part of the garden I might as well talk about while we're here. Uh, this is just like barren land. Um, we weren't quite sure what we're going to do with it, but I've always wanted chickens. So we're going to make kind of like a, a floating chicken run. No, bed with the run underneath and all the way along here. Clip back some of this rhododendron. I'll probably access it from the top and from the bottom. So there'll be two separate areas but I think it'll be I think it'll be nice. A couple of trees to come down. Um these lot will probably have to come down. Um the the red robins don't get enough light so yeah they'll be coming down and this sludgy mess here is actually grass cuttings that I've just been laying down to kill the grass and uh kind of prepare it for um a box hedge. Uh because the box hedge obviously is a good formal hedge. So moving back this way, again, traffic. Sorry, my nose is running as well. So if you can hear me sniffing, <laughs> sorry. Uh, all this cardboard here is again, to suppress the grass for a box hedge because the box hedge is going to run all the way along. Uh, this fella here looking very sad. I forgot about him in a pot. Uh, I know conifers tend not to survive, but I thought I would give him a couple of years just to see if he'll spring back. But it's just, it's not looking good. Poor guy. He was a bargain anyway. I think we got him for like £5 or something. Um, so I'm going to swing you around again. So back to this area. Um, I've planted daffodils and crocus underneath the tree. A couple of crocuses and daffodils kind of drift in towards here. Um, you can kind of see a drift that I've been planting there. And there's one about there as well. Thanks, Logan. Um, following along here, we have another drift of crocuses just on the corner. 
just planted some here as well, which leads to the second set of seps. Um, I've got another drift of crocuses here. And, oh hi, <laughs> let me get out of the view. The path that I pointed out down there was actually originally here, um, which I thought was kind of pointless. So I have dug them up and seeded it, protected it from doggies. Um, all these slabs still have to be dug in. It's just essentially uh, to make it easier to mow, cut the grass. Uh, and they were all dug up from there, which is going to be my vegetable patch, but I'm not even going to bother looking at that bit because it is just, it's just a mess. Oh, look. Hello, fella. The exact reason why I like doing gardening is for all the little beasties. You're going to scare them away? Oh, thanks. Yeah, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've got same slabs to go down here. A couple of bulbs in that pot. This area, you can still see my shadow, I'm sorry. This area here is going to be um, a homemade arch, which I'll actually quickly show you because uh, it's just over here. So Paul helped me make the arch. So it's just some trees that we, we cut down. Um, I'm in the process of making a wee video for that too. All this will be used either for gates or another arch, probably a gate. Oh look, there's another another butterfly. Logan's probably going to scare this guy away, basking in the sun. Hello, hello. Beautiful, huh? Oh, um, two compost bins. Actually, might as well. Uh, I am super chuffed. Underneath this layer of grimy grass, is compost. Um, yeah. Super chuffed. Oh my god. What do I see here? What is this? A strawberry. Um, not quite ready. Wow, I'm still getting strawberries. Fantastic. Right. Anyway, moving along. Ignore this mess. This will be raised beds for my veg patch. Probably make a, another video about that. So, uh, going back to the formal hedge, this all again will be the same all the way to the conifer that I've skirted. I lifted the, the bottom up a bit because there's a little bit scabby on the bottom, so I might take it up a bit further, I don't know. Um, on the same line of hedge rows, this is what I did this week. Um, I have a RHS approved hedge bundle coming. Uh, for the birdies and wildlife um, and it'll be planted along here just to separate the two kind of areas this is starting to get to more where Ailish's play area will be and there's a pond or I should say four ponds um, so this will lead all the way along um, sorry it's getting windy now hi uh, all the way along here right to the wall um, which will separate my veg patch to everything else give it a bit of shelter because it is windy at the top so I've got to try and do something uh, right moving on so Logan would you just slow down man this is our septic tank lovely I know but it's in the way um, originally we were going to put a sloping bit of grass down this way but I think this will now be uh, walled off somewhat maybe a step or two a little bit of a seating area here uh, keep the two areas nice and separate. All this will be getting dug up, all the stonework where this uh, brista table is, that'll be all dug up, uh, arched this way. Um, down here is a bit of land we're renting, uh, which is for Paul's project. Currently, an old shed and a dog kennel behind there, which that'll turn from my chickens, it'll turn into their run or bed, I should say, and the dog kennel will be getting replaced with a metal one. So welcome to the first pond, the top pond, the only one that is remotely close to being a pond. Very overgrown, unloved, probably years and years worth of flag irises, uh, weeds. There's even brambles coming into it. 
Um, all this will be renovated, restored. Uh, we're going to try and sort out the pump situation because there's a nice wee waterfall here. Trickles in and I believe that little space here is where it would fall down. Um, so if I lead you back around here. You have to try and kind of imagine how it would be because uh, it's just been so neglected. So neglected. Um, all this will be dug up for grass. Uh, believe it or not, under here is a rockery. Um, see if I can show you properly. So, top pond, all this is rockery somewhere. Uh, then we have two, two little ponds, uh, which is part of the waterfall. So one there, then it cascades down into this sludge which in turn cascades down here which is just brambles at the moment and a valerian an old thistle to the last and second largest pond uh, which had a liner on it and we were told that the liner was ripped and it just had to be replaced and put back together but the original concrete pond is still there so we are going to try and replace the liner with the original concrete, see if it is actually broken or if it's just, you know, I don't know, just not cared for, I suppose. Um, all these conifers will be staying apart from that dead one there. Um, good for the birdies. And along here, I'm going to step back for this bit without tripping over a wheelbarrow. This section here, from the wee rhododendron all the way to that pond, um, eventually I'm going to put a a low... Um, oh god, I don't know how to, to, to explain it. So, one of my friends, her mum uh, puts fences and in between two bits of wire she puts sticks and stuff for the wildlife really lorries three of you right now um so i'm gonna do a short maybe two foot tall fence in there with a gap in the middle so i can just put all the cuttings of trees leaves twigs whatever uh there's a little habitat for beasties the rest will be planted with a hedge which eventually i will arch um it'll come to probably about here uh, so this part is going to be my secret jewel garden, is what I'm calling it at the moment. So there's not much really to see here apart from just overgrown stuff. Um, it's a beautiful little, little nook, which I thought I thought it'd be nice to have a hammock in here where Rannick's standing. Um, all the grass will be ripped up and replaced with a turf alternative. Um, all this will be dug out and planted probably. Um, this lovely conifer that's half dead. I'm just going to remove all the dead stuff and keep it because I absolutely adore the colour with the Acer behind it. Um, which just needs to be revealed and looked after a bit better. Remove all the brambles. Um, there is bamboo growing up through here, which is handy for, you know, supports, veg garden, but bit of a nuisance and then if I swing round gently go back to this part this is where we came down from the pond uh, this border here was one two three four five five overgrown conifer trees which we cut down I saved that fella because I love how he's got multi stems and uh, multi trunks uh, this is going to become my ornamental grass border, which at the moment is holding piles of cut grass. Uh, I'm going to use as a mulch just to stop the, the weeds coming up in the spring. And then I'll probably just remove it all um, and go from there. We've got a lovely bench area here, which was just a mess of weeds. But I lifted it up and put down some of this stone, which we got from Dobby's. Uh, what was it called? Oh gosh, I've forgotten what it's called now. 
But yeah, that bench came with the house as well, so we'll probably just make it look a bit better <laughs> in time. Uh, now this border was my first attempt at planting a herbaceous perennial border. Uh, the two bushes at the back there, tractor, my god, um, and the yew was there originally. Um, beautiful lupins at the moment in a second flush of flower. Uh, I gave it a good cut back. These were saved from a border up the top. They were just so tired. Uh, lupins are pretty hardy anyway, so got them. I've got a nice ornamental grass coming through. Some penstemon, verbena, uh, osteospermum is there. I've actually taken cuttings from all of these. Uh, I can't remember the name of these, but these are propagations. It's like a, it starts with L. It's a big daisy-like flower. Oh, hello, Elish. Hi. Hold on, baby. I'm almost done. <laughs> um, I noticed as well, this thorny little bush has bonny little berries. How nice are those? Um, I think this is one of the joys of taking on someone else's garden, is you get surprised with the, the things that are already in it. Um, I've got a dahlia back there, um, or penstemon, and a second dahlia here. These will probably be lifted soon once the first frost hits. I also have seedlings of foxgloves in here, um, some volunteer sedum. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, and that was our home warming gift. Uh, what do you call them again? Oh no. I've forgotten the name. What? What's it called? Oh, yeah. You know what it is. <laughs> There's the flower for help. Oh my god. I can't believe I've forgotten. Oh dear. So yeah, we have, I have lupins dotted all the way around. Just little ones. There's another bunch of um, foxgloves. Uh, hostas. I've got a hosta down at the front as well. I hear you, darling. I see you. This is what I'm going to be calling my long border. It is approximately 30 meters long. Um, I've just been digging it out recently, getting rid of all the overgrown, unwanted shrubbery. Uh, I'll be covering this with black plastic soon, uh, just so I don't have to worry about the weeds. This hostel will be getting divided. I love that bush there. I can't remember the name of it now. Um, but it'll be staying because it's nice. So I swing you around. Um, goes all the way down. So this is the second level of the garden. Um, this again is another rockery, but it's just, if you can find a rockery, let me know. <laughs> Rhododendron, very overgrown. I believe there's actually three varieties in there. Um, cars again. So these will be either getting removed completely if I can't save them or I'll cut them back really well and do it that way. You okay, Elish? Are you needing a wee wee? Hold on, oopsies. There we go, back in action. <laughs> oh, motherhood. <laughs> Getting distracted by the garden. Anyway, so yeah, rockery. Uh, there is another section that goes down this way. Oh gosh, what's my gimbal doing? Um, which you can see the, riv the river, what would you call that? A burn, stream, and the bridge underneath. So my idea at the moment, at the moment, it might change because big garden, big plans. Um, I'm planning on putting some sort of hedgerow, just a low hedgerow in here. Uh, and from here down to the fence line, I'm wanting to do like a woodland garden because it's very wet down there. As you can imagine with all that water. 
Uh, so yeah, that's my idea anyway. But it's very overgrown, full of brambles. Um, another rockery here, which is actually staying as a rockery. I'm keeping one. <laughs> because uh, it's probably in the better condition just again full of weeds ferns bracken ferns to be exact um, brambles multiple grasses mosses some wildflower which probably will keep um, you can see the seed heads of some there uh, I'll probably keep them good for the buggies and the beasties um, so this strip of uncut grass is the second meadow, so it's a smaller meadow of the two, which I'll show you the first one in a minute. Um, it was a lot larger, but I've decided to cut this back and I'll probably just keep this as grass, get rid of the moss, keep it as grass. Have a seating area here so you can see and hear the water. This big conifer is staying because he's super healthy. Uh, and then if I step back a bit, I will show you the monkey puzzle, which is, I think, oh, about 50 plus feet tall. We took the bottom branches off because uh, it was touching the floor and it was probably out to where Ranish stands at the moment. Um, it is impressive. Magnificent tree. Um, so we're going to try and make a statement of it. Hi darling, I won't be long. I'm almost done. Better be quick. So, garden ends at that wall there. Um, this is going to be some sort of Japanese style low maintenance garden because uh, of the Acer there, maple, brilliant. Uh, probably going to put a sun house in here because the evening sun is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, weeds, weeds and more weeds. This is the first meadow you can kind of see where um, I'm turfing it up. Um, we were lucky enough to find some steps in there. So when the meadow is actually in, um, we'll be able to walk down. Sadly, these rhododendrons are going to have to get ripped out because I don't think I'm going to be able to save them. Um, but anyway, I better go and be a mother again. Uh, I'll show you the last little bit. I'm down here, darling. Um, this junk pile at the moment is going to be um, a pergola. So, yeah, big plans, big garden. Where are you, Eilish? Better go find my child. Right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>